Hey y'all, welcome back for another episode. This is going to be episode six of Addicted to Growth. Now, if you don't know, last week we showed how we went trick-or-treating and the kids had lots of fun, but it was really, really cold out. So I'm going to continue the conversation where we last left off at, which was me sitting at the Airbnb table and having a deep conversation. Halloween was great. The kids, they actually, they hit the jackpot a lot because we went to a really nice neighborhood where they had lots of big houses and they were giving like full candy bars out to the kids. So they really had a great time. But like I said, life was very lonely and depressing because Jace wasn't there, David wasn't there, and all the kids weren't together that year. Grew out of that fit Kaiser now. She's like, I'm, I was about to get rid of all these, so I brought him with me. I was like, okay, cool. So he has a lot, Ensley, she needs more. I'll get really close to here. I'll yeah. send you that address cool. to make it easier for you. Mm -hmm. um, but I would just, there was great stuff at Target when we loved we this girl stuff. I know, to where I know. We could have, so we could have yeah. like, I know, it went all out. Wow. $4 pants, that I is know. so cute. <laughs> And they have the little elastics inside, so if they're too big, you can tighten them or loosen them. Yeah. yeah. What's that's that's the company? Jane, Jack, whatever. Um, Jill and Jack. Jill and Jack. Jill and Jack. Jack is so cute. Yeah. Something like that. Alex and Ami. Cool, that's nice. Maybe you can just hang out here. You've got to do it from like, yep. from you can order groceries if you want, Janelle. I wouldn't even, I would just stay yeah. with the kids. Mm -hmm. And we can. Mm -hmm. I can even order them and just pick them up, like how they have the pickup mm -hmm. groceries. Oh, really? Yeah, they go over. Yeah, you can share with So, you know, since I was living the single mom life, I had a lot of errands to run. Target was my favorite place to go to at the time because they have the best kid clothes. If you don't know it or not, definitely go there and check it out. Besides going to Target, I also had to get groceries. So there's this really awesome app. I don't know if you guys heard of it or not. It's called Shipped. And certain states have it, certain states don't. But where I was at at the time, it was brand new. And it's basically like Uber Eats, but for grocery shopping. So they come right to your door and deliver all the groceries. <laughs> My friend Jennifer said, people are saying you're in Tennessee. I said, how do they know? Probably a fan saw me. Uh, what did you say? Oh, app. Have you seen that anywhere? But, but it's called shipped. Yeah, S H I P T. Oh, okay. You're welcome. Thank you. That's <laughs> awesome. I, I never knew that, that in your life. Yeah. yeah. Radar online said it. It's not there anymore. <laughs> Send me. Like. I wonder where I got these. They're a combination of H and R. Now, like I said in other episodes, this was eventually going to hit the news about the no contact order, me and David separating, and I knew it was going to be big news. And what do you know? It happened. And they had headlines up everywhere. Janelle's running out of money. Janelle flees to Tennessee. I just want to point out that I was not running out of money, and I'm still not running out of money. I'm doing just fine for myself. And just as good as when I was on TV. So let's get that out of the way. I feel like everyone was in panic mode at the time. They're like, where's Janelle? Where's she going to be next? Where's she going? Um, are they going to have a custody battle coming up? And there was a lot of unanswered questions to the public. And I just needed my time. I needed my privacy. And my kids definitely needed it too. I'm telling you, people dig, dude. Dig. Safety fears. Janelle Evans flees from a strange husband, David, to Tennessee. What's the source? Like, I'm, uh, right from Tennessee, I'm right so. looking right now. I don't think you will do. It's my favorite when somebody yeah. says that you're running out of money. It went off like a light bulb in her head, the source told Radar. I have this husband that doesn't work. What in the hell am I going to do? I'm like, who are these, these people that are saying these sources. things? Sources. He said he, he doesn't work. It irritates me, but I never said, what am I going to do? Because he doesn't work. What am I going to do? Well, what am I going to do? Yeah, okay. Well, I did not yeah. say that to anyone. <laughs> he said doesn't know where she is. If he didn't know anything about this, he thinks she's around town. But she's not, and she's not going to go back until he's gone. He thinks he's just... He thinks she's just gone for a couple of days. Well, I never said I was going back if he was gone. Yeah. I'm going to sell the house. It's one of the <laughs> like, where, you know, yeah. everybody yeah. knows. I know they're the like house. twisting words and yeah. I know. <laughs> oh man. What a day. It went pretty smooth. Come check it out. Yeah. Yeah. Now, of course, all these articles came from a source close to me. So that's another thing. 
being a social media influencer, famous, celebrity, anything of the sorts, public figure, people that you are close to will sell you out to the tabloids. And what really sucks is that they say it's from a source and they won't tell you exactly who it is. That's why I say on social media all the time that it's really hard for me to trust my friends because a lot of people do sell me out in the tabloids. It's been happening for years. I'm kind of used to it at this point. So I just put up a wall and it's hard for me to make friends. Now, a lot of the articles at the time tied into me with the Teen Mom reunion because I went to New York City to begin with. And when I went out and hung out with the agency and my friends, Jeremy ended up coming with us. Yes, Leah Mezzer's baby daddy, Jeremy. They said, but just to let you know, she was with a big group they of people did. and they, they weren't sitting, and Jeremy and Janelle were not sitting next to each other. So Jeremy she clarified that, all that. But, but they don't. Do they not so. have Jeremy? No. They're no. on different season. Jeremy yeah. doesn't even talk to oh, the girls on Oh, these are people season. from different seasons. Yeah, it was the young and pregnant yeah. girls. Yeah. And who did they get in a fight with? The other girls are on their cast. Okay, um, so it was only They're like their throwing cast. shoes at each other. But we were selling our own world. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and then Kale, supposedly from Team Mom 2, was like mediating on stage. And then everyone, and then Nessa was like, sit down, don't talk, the host. The one that started stuff yeah. with me. Yeah, she yeah. was like, Kale, sit down. And Kale was like, I'm leaving. And she left the studio. And she's like, I am not doing this. She's like, you guys wanted me on stage with the young and pregnant girls. Why? I'm like, yeah, why? <laughs> Drama. I was about to say, it yep. seems like it panned out nicely. <laughs> A lot of the articles at the time said that me and Jeremy went out. And we went out by ourselves. And we had dinner. Jeremy knows the agency people. And that's how he got involved. So when I went to New York, he was, Jeremy was there for the Teen Mom reunion and to see the agency and talk to them because he, he knows them. He knew them before me. And um, then we just ran into each other and we all went out as a group for dinner. It wasn't just one-on-one. -on -one. It wasn't a date. It was just friends getting together to hang out. That's it. Nothing more came out of it. But of course, after the Teen Mom 2 reunion, you know, that was the first one I didn't go to that year. So Jeremy gave us an update how that reunion went. And it didn't go so well. Kale ended up walking off stage. They had the young and pregnant girls on at the time. So I don't know. It was just very dramatic. And I'm so glad I wasn't involved. Um, MTV called, they called the cast and the women's, like, right when it was breaking and said, if you comment, you better not say anything negative or else. Good. All made positive comments. That's oh. funny because usually Larry's like, I'm sorry, I can't control them. This yeah. is serious. We're mm -hmm. gonna support her. Yeah. And Jeremy called me after I guess OK Magazine got a hold of him. Mm -hmm. Now that I was he serious. asked for your number. Yeah. I, and you had said. Yeah, well, that's fine. Yeah. So he calls me. He's like, Did she change her number? I said, When today? She. He goes, Her phone was off. I said, She's in an appointment. Wait, wait, call wait, wait. Now, when I left New York City, a lot of people were on my side. A lot of people as in the cast so when the media went out and asked all the girls how do you think even though Janelle's let go how do you feel that she separated from David and they were all very happy for me and hoped that I was gonna do well and I was like oh that's funny they hated me so much before and now they don't so at the time that's when Jeremy reached out to the agency girl and asked her for my number so then we can just talk because he wanted to check up on me how I was doing in Tennessee but we literally talk strictly as friends and how you doing and that's about it. Me and Jeremy, we've talked as friends for a long time. Like when I was going through the whole Nathan cheating bullshit, Jeremy was going through being cheated on by Leah at the time. So we connected then as friends and then we kind of fell out of being friends and then we started being friends again. But I mean, as of now, I haven't talked to him in a while and I don't know, we just stopped talking when I moved back to North Carolina. And um, since I've been off the show, I really haven't connected with anyone. A very big thing for me at the time was trying to live my life as normal as possible, but without being seen and without making a scene. As in, if I walk in somewhere, everyone notices and everyone starts taking pictures and videos of me from far away, then I'm uncomfortable thinking there's eyes on me and I just hate it. So. That's why in the scene we're sitting there talking about where can I go that I can just act normal and nobody's going to see me. So that's why we're thinking about just going to like a little get together at a bar or something just so I can get my mind off things and just try to be have a normal night without kids.
See you later. Sorry, great to meet you. Yeah, I definitely. Love to hang out more. Yeah, if I can get a babysitter tomorrow, yeah, I'll definitely come. come hey. What do you think? I'm gonna ask the guys, but I think it should be okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. If I just go, it, if I go when you know, just Maybe don't go early. <laughs> go when it starts. And me and Mary when, when, every, when everyone's paid attention. It's kind of like a darker room too, with a bunch of. Even if you wear like a baseball cap. Cash. Exactly. So, yeah. yeah. Okay, so It'll that's what we'll do. Yeah, there's a bunch of tables too against walls, so maybe you sit in the table, like in the chair next yeah, to the wall. Yeah, exactly. Or you're kind of like fenced in. Mm -hmm. Plus, if anyone sees me anyway, I mean, it's yeah. not like it's a big deal. I mean. At that time, I just freshly signed up for therapy, and it was really helping me because, like I said, I make really bad impulsive decisions. So it's like I gotta sit down and think about what I'm gonna do before I do it. But I like to have another opinion before I do anything. And I thought it would be best to have a therapist. And it really helped out. Besides talking to my therapist about, you know, um, the media or what's happening with David, I told her how stressed I was about the kids and how they didn't listen to me. And she helped me find different approaches to parenting differently. So then the kids can actually start listening to me. I didn't want to say the wrong thing in the media or the wrong thing to the wrong person. Or should I cut this person off? Or are they really my friends? And it's really helpful to have another person's opinion because sometimes you think you see it in the right perspective, but you don't. Explain the no contact order and I said, you know, I don't know how he's going to react once he gets that. And I said, that's a big concern of mine. And she's like, oh, he doesn't know. I was like, not yet. He has to be served. And she's like, yeah, I can only imagine how hard it is with just everyone looking at your relationship and judging you. She's like, and you're a person. She's like, and she's like, I know that. She's like, so I understand. She's like, but a lot of people don't. I was like, yeah. So she really understood my, she put herself in my shoes. And that's why I appreciate it a lot. I'm just really proud of you for doing that. Thanks. Totally. Yeah, and I was really tired, and I was like, oh, no, I might have to reschedule. And I was like, let me just get coffee. I was like, Sherry, you got the kids. I have to go. I was like, I was like, if she got the kids for me, I got to go. I got to go. And I was super tired, but I'm, I'm good now. The nice thing is, if you connect with her, you'll look forward to going. Yeah, and I think that. if I do, like, a Monday, Friday schedule i think it'll be like you know after the weekend and then before the weekend starts it's yeah. so like get through the week get through the weekend and check in at the beginning check in at the end well hopefully you guys can get a good night's sleep and give them their gummies then. yeah those sleeping gummies <laughs> Sleeping gummies. Now, I don't know if you guys have heard of these, but Z Quill, Night Quill brand, they make kids gummies and they're little melatonin gummies. And I used to give it to the kids when we were in Tennessee because it would help them fall asleep easily and without them staying up all night running around going crazy. In order for me to have a normal life in Tennessee again, I just wanted to feel normal. So, with that being said, I wanted to have an alone mom night without kids. And Nathan's mom really helped out with that a lot. She, you know, I explained to her how I was feeling and she's like, no problem, I'll take the kids for you. She was a very big help and I was very grateful. And then tomorrow, just let me know if you need anything. Yeah, I'll and I'll, um, I'm not gonna ask Doris till tomorrow, you know, um, about watching the kids. Yeah, I'd wait. Yeah, just wait. But I'm gonna tell her, I'm gonna be like, I'm, I'm gonna drop them off at like, you know, 7.30. <laughs> So they're and I'll drop them off in their pajamas, ready to for bed. Yeah. Then you can put them to bed at eight. Let them run around for thirty minutes, and then I can go pick them up in the morning. I mean, I think it'd be nice just to even have time with them at home, like yeah. tomorrow during the day. How nice! That and also, I have to have a sit down conversation with Kaiser about, you know, just explaining that what we're doing, because he hasn't asked questions, but he definitely doesn't know. He probably thinks we're here. Just so he can visit his Nana. <laughs> what are you going to tell That, you know, we're just, we're going to move here and we're moving away. Okay. My little sister and Angel does me. What? That's it. Yeah, okay. I'm so happy to say bye-bye. Oh, okay. You. Be good. Okay, see you in a minute. She Sorry. told she told one person she's like trick or treat. I was like okay, say thank you. She's like thanks. See you tomorrow. <laughs>
So what are you going to say to Carson? Just that, you know, we're moving away and we're going to move here and we're not going to be around David anymore. And I think Kaiser will be happy, but sad because he did like David and he liked learning from David. It has nothing to do with mm -hmm. him and that David loved him because I, you know. Yeah. There's, he's just such a sweet, like tender hearted little boy. Mm -hmm. He's so sweet. He is. You have good kids, Janelle. Thanks. <laughs> They're crazy, but yeah. They they definitely they definitely love me and when me and David start arguing, they like they're like, Are you okay? Are you gonna be okay? And like Jason Kaiser come give me hugs and Lee come gives me hugs yeah. and... How do you think Marissa is taking this? I bet you she's devastated. With me just taking off and going to Tennessee, it made me really concerned with how Marissa was going to feel about all of it because I knew that once I left she was going to be like now what or worry about the house or worry about her little sister and where she's at and when she can talk to her again and I didn't want to cut them off completely from that and that's why I was still allowing David to talk to Ensley with the no contact order because it's very important for the child to have a relationship with the mother and the father and siblings please don't ever cut off siblings because that's like the worst thing you can do. You're not taking it out on the parent. You're taking it out on the child. And then at the same time, you know, nothing was Marissa's fault. And I was concerned how she was acting. But like I said, David had a really bad attitude and his name calling was like off the charts. So, I mean, I was done with it and I really just needed him to change. Even though I was so angry and mad at David, I loved him so much and I still do. But you know you tried, right? Oh yeah, and she knows She knows I tried. And she knows I'd be there to pick her up from school. She knows I would order her lunch every day to school because Subway delivers it. She knows I would give her money for lunch to buy lunch in advance because they'd bring them like, you know, like Chick-fil-A one and then Bojangles and all that some weeks. So she knows, and she knows that as soon as she would ask for something, I would buy it for her off Amazon. She asked for a jewelry making kit that was like $100. And, I, and we told her if she got good grades, I'd get it for her. And I got it for her. And it's just, she's going to have a big transition not getting nothing. And going back to, you know, before I met her dad. Which, which was, you know, back in 2015, a long time ago. So she's, she's used to getting what she wants all the time and just like someone doing stuff for her all the time for her good behavior and being rewarded for her good behavior and I just feel like no one's going to acknowledge that now when I'm in the living room we'll put on 90 Day Fiance both of us will watch it she'll be like these people are crazy I'm like I know right like we would talk and conversate and hang out when I picked her up from school she would tell me stuff about her friends and stuff like that and I would conversate with her back but then if she told her David, David would kind of like in one ear out the other like not pay attention be like oh okay yep yep uh-huh like not give her feedback like oh that's cool what your friends did or or derogatory towards her or no that for you no just like if she just like if she like you know, I told them a million times to take their old food out of the very back seat. And, you know, if they left their food back there, he would get on her and just be like, you can't leave your stuff in the back seat. But, like, he would never cuss at the kids or nothing. But he would cuss at me in front of the kids. He needs something because in school they couldn't handle him. Like, I had to switch him schools because they couldn't handle him. But he was in, you know, like I said, a charter school that was very strict. Like, walk in a straight line, put your hands behind your back. When you sit at the desk, you have to do this. Like, he cannot do that. So I switched back to his old school. We will, um, the other thing is, we should probably, on Monday, plan on going to register him. Yeah, yeah definitely. Because I don't want him falling behind and he's already going to switch. Well, and Tennessee starts, their school year starts significantly earlier than North Carolina, I think by like four weeks. No, he just, he needs to work on his letters, his numbers, just, um, he was working on tracing. He was learning vowels when we left. Yeah, and then Doris is like, you know, oh, there's a good, good school up here. 
which I understand that, but that's like kind of far and then he'd have to go there during the week. It. Yeah, and I think I need time to like, you know, just look at the different neighborhoods, see what I like, see if I'm gonna sell my house, see if I'm gonna rent, see if, if I'm gonna buy. Yeah. That's my mom, she's just texting. Who's leaking all this stuff? Yesterday fans were asking for pics in Nashville airport, but I didn't do any. And made no comment to no one. Did you have fun Halloweening? <laughs> she said Halloweening. <laughs> yeah. Kaiser had a really hard time in school. And I know I mentioned this before in the other episodes, but when he got to Tennessee, he had a bad time once again. He was not sitting in his seat. They would call me every day to like come pick him up. Even on the bus, he was bad and he was cussing out kids. And he was cussing out like eighth graders and he was only in kindergarten. So I knew we had a big problem on our hands and I really didn't know how to deal with it. Um, I tried to contact his teacher all the time and we tried to, you know, I tried to show him his letters and numbers at home, but that wasn't helping. I didn't sit down long enough to pay attention for me. So I didn't know how I was gonna solve this problem with him going to school and not paying attention. Kaiser started kindergarten a little early. He just literally turned six, like a week before that. So I pulled him out and Kaiser ended up going back to school in fall of 2020 and he's doing a lot better than he did before, a lot better. He's paying attention, he's learning how to read, he's learning his letters perfectly and he does Zoom class, which is crazy to me because he is really learning and he's doing online school. But next year he'll be on campus. All the kids will be at school next year. Thank God. <laughs> but a lot of the things I used for Kaiser's educational curriculum, I ordered letter flash cards. I used, if you go to Amazon, they have these kid highlighter books and they have expo markers so that you can wipe it away when they're done. So it takes up a lot less mess. Well, that's it for the end of episode six. Tune in next week for episode seven of Addicted to Growth. Bye, you guys.